The war on drugs didn't touch us all. Across America, poor black and brown communities have been policed and penalized at unprecedented rates. But wealthier white communities remain insulated. College students may even experiment on college campuses without punishment. Legal marijuana sales is the fastest growing industry in the U.S. As the laws around drugs loosen, the people who have been hurt the hardest may have the most to gain. Marijuana is now legal in Colorado. Governor John Hickenlooper signing an executive order legalizing marijuana for recreational use. In 2012, Colorado became the first state in the U.S. to legalize recreational marijuana. Today, it's a big business. Over 1,200 dispensaries are bringing in hundreds of millions annually. But of those 1,200 dispensaries, only one is owned by a black woman, Wanda James. I'm a former military officer. I worked on Barack Obama's National Finance Committee. I run three congressional campaigns. I own three businesses. Um, and I'm a pothead. This is what I do, this is what I'm proud of. My job is to change people's perception of what this plant is. Wanda brought us to one of the many marijuana growth facilities in Colorado. Around 130 metric tons of marijuana is distributed in Colorado each year. That's equal to three fully loaded semi-trucks worth of cannabis. What are the most of the owners, the, the sort of new industry of cannabis dispensers and who are they? 73% of um, the owners and managers in the cannabis industry right now are white males. About 23, 24% happen to be white females. A small amount are Latino. And then there's Dan and I that own dispensaries. You have, and so you are the sole dispensary owner. Black woman? Yes. Wow. Yes. On one hand, you have people that are now going to be millionaires off of the very industry that criminalize, I don't know, a, a black or brown person walking down the street would say $25 worth yeah. of, of cannabis. And that's it. still happening. Don't think just because we see the business of cannabis happening here in Colorado, that in Alabama, people are still not being arrested and given felons and doing time. That in Georgia, people are not still being arrested and given felons also and doing time. Also the thing time. that people are making big money off of in places like Colorado. And who lives in New York and Chicago and Detroit and Miami. So when you start to look at the number of white males making billions off of this plant, and black males still serving time because of this plant, it does not make sense that in America, your zip code determines whether you're a millionaire or a felon. Makes no sense at all. This is Wanda's brother, Rick. They grew up in different zip codes. Wanda in a wealthier, whiter community with her father, and Rick in a poorer, mostly black community with his mother. I grew up just like any other person did without a father, you know what I mean? You, you just, you, you got a group of people or friends that you hung out with and you just like, you got a rapport with them. And you just like, you smoke weed with each other, you know what I'm saying? We didn't, we never really thought about getting in trouble for smoking weed or nothing, you know what I'm saying? It was just smoking weed, let's do it, you know what I mean? So go get a sack and smoke some weed. When Rick was 17, he was arrested in Texas for possession of four and a half ounces of marijuana and sentenced to 10 years in prison. When they put you in a penitentiary, you, it's, called, it's, it's like it's slavery, you know what I mean? You, you're doing free labor down there. You, you, you working on the farms, producing vegetables and, and, and all this stuff for these, city, these states, you know what I mean, to sell to you know, consumers. While he was in jail, he did four and a half years of picking cotton in the Texas penal system for free. That to me is cruel and unusual punishment. That doesn't even make sense to me. His experience had been vastly different. Vastly different. Because of the color of his skin, because of his gender, than yours. And because, of, and because of the zip code, you know, and that you existed in. We have decided to wage war on America's lower class. A big part of that lower class happened to be black and brown. We are definitively being targeted, and that needs to stop. When you target a group of people, you make them criminals for the very basis of profiting for people who are investing in privatized prison systems and slave labor. That's wrong. Today, Rick manages another one of Wanda's businesses, the Jezebel Restaurant in Denver. And it's working out great. Jezebel's thriving. But if he could, Rick would probably be a part of Colorado's booming weed economy. After his sentence, 
He was growing cannabis for Wanda's medical dispensary. But the laws changed in 2010, banning those with felony drug convictions from the industry. If it's something that you want to do or you like to do or you can do, they won't accept you because of the conviction. And how do you survive? I mean, how, how can you survive not getting a job or getting work that you want to do or you, you can do? If I, wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have Wanda, you know what I'm saying, I don't think I'd be where I'm at right now. Scott, Wanda's husband and business partner, is cooking us bean soup with some cannabis oil from their shop. Pot works. It helps physically. It helps mentally. I've seen it. But what this industry has done for us, it, it, it's given us a voice. I wish there was as many opportunities for people of our color in this industry, and there's not, okay, for whatever reason. So we look at it as we're pioneers, but also we look at it as like, we're not special. You know, we, we both came from, you know, mixed marriages, broken families, yada, 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 like most black people in America have. You know, our whole thing was proved with everyone that we work to get to this level. And because we've done it, other people now say we can do it. Then the battle becomes just like the 1960s. I mean, in your generation, you, you don't care about sitting on the bus because you can sit on the bus anywhere you want to. Your battle, or for the younger people's battle, is how do I own the bus? How do I own the bus lines, you know? Once we remove the stigma of mass incarceration and being locked up for this, the next battle is, now how do we own this? You know, how does this industry pay us back for the hundred years of destroying generations of people. That's the next battle. But Wanda can't do it alone. For more people of color to capitalize off of this new industry, our entire perception of marijuana needs to change. But more than that, long-held perceptions of black people in the U.S. as criminal need to change as well. As it stands, the people least impacted by the war on drugs, those with clean records and the means to pay the massive licensing costs are benefiting. And why should that be the case when marijuana is a growing part of our commerce and culture? Shouldn't its benefits be available to everyone? 